well, first of all, Mark, I can't travel with you anymore <laughs> because my parents are in the audience again today. Oh. <laughs> and um, they didn't know that I had that pilot's license. <laughs> So much. <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> you know, sometimes you keep things from your parents so that they don't worry about you. <laughs> Appreciate that, Mark. <laughs> and I will take um, the opportunity today to um, again reiterate what Mark had to say. It is. Um, it's always a privilege and a pleasure to have my parents here in the audience with me. Um, it's probably even more a privilege and, a parent, and, a, and, a, and an honor this year because my father, um, day after Christmas, had, was admitted into the hospital. And since Christmas, uh, he has had two open heart surgeries and um, is here today. And And when I heard CJ this morning um, present and show the um, text that he got from his dad that said, um, now show him what you got, <clears throat> well, that's exactly what I have to hear too. And um, many times my father has woken me up and my mother standing right beside him and said, if anything's worth doing, it's worth doing right. And they always put that next part, now come out by me, which, know, which makes me know that they've been there every step of the way. And, and even at this point, they're still there every step of the way. Um, and, and this is home. Uh, the football stadium that you see right behind here, uh, drum major. And, and I, that's probably one of my first leadership opportunities. And so this football stadium in this area is very, very near and dear to my, to my heart. Today I want to talk about connecting the dots. And we see from our theme that we've had a, a space theme going on here. And so sometimes when we think of the dots, we may look out into outer space and the planets may look like dots, but somehow they all align and it makes our universe work. Other times, we may look at a picture of connecting the dots and we see where numbers are there and we know that we have to fill in the lines in order to be able to see the clear picture. Well, the reality is that I hope that throughout the day and during our conversation now that you'll be able to see that with eBoard, we're able to clearly put that picture in place. Some of you, like me, may have as your favorite candy dots. And sometimes when I leave them in the car when I'm hiding them from my children, they get a little sticky. But really, and sometimes it's hard to pull them apart because they're like glue. Eboard can help us put the glue to what we're doing if we allow it to connect the dots. When I was growing up, across the street from our home was um, Miss Haslett. And Miss Haslett was a piano teacher. But Miss Haslett was blind. And I had the opportunity as an elementary school student to have Miss Haslett put her hand on my shoulder and I would guide Miss Haslett up the road to where she would go and teach piano at Riverdale Elementary School. And during that time that I had the opportunity to work with Miss Haslett, I learned that um, you folded your money and put it in your billfold so that you knew what you were going to hand out in your currency. I learned how, using a stylus, how to write in Braille. Um, never could understand how it made sense music-wise. Um, like Mark said, I, I was a um, high school choral director and grew up with music in my background, but I never could figure out how all of that worked, how she could read and play the piano all at the same time. But in Braille, it helps you when you connect the dots to communicate. And I hope that in our conversation today you can see how connecting the dots can help us communicate better. And one more set of dots. Sometimes when we look at the stars and we pull those stars together and we create a constellation, sometimes it allows us to look out and see and reach 
for the STARS in what we're trying to do to communicate with all of our stakeholders. So today, I hope as we look at this, we can make some sense of connecting the dots. But I am going to ask you, are you boldly going where many have not gone before? And if you are not taking advantage of all of the things that are a part of the smorgasbord of eBoard, then I encourage you to boldly go where not many have gone before. If you look across the tab at, at eBoard, you'll see that one of the first tabs is about us. And I don't know about you, but our about us allows us to have bios about our board members. It allows us to tell the story about who are our governing team within our school system. It also allows us, I mentioned earlier that we are a charter system. At each one of our schools, we have governance teams. We have listed on our About Us, on our tab, the opportunity to put all of our governance team members as well. Now, you may ask, how does that come in handy? Just recently, we had um, a board item that went forward and it, it asked for governance team input, and the media was asking, well, who are the governance team members? Well, guess what we told the media to do? Go right to the About Us tab, and you can pull down where it says that under Winder Barrow Middle School, you can read the governance team members that are bringing forward this recommendation that, that our board looked at. And so, as our media and other people within our community People that are working with the other stakeholders within our community are able to see who is it that we can have conversation with. So the About Us tab is a critical tab for us as we use that in our district. News. We've heard over and over and over again about how we have to tell the story. We can use eBoard under the news tab to not only have our district news, but it has press releases from our school system as well as state press releases and statewide news. Recently, we had information that told us that we had our high schools that were considered AP STEM schools and that one of our high schools was an AP STEM achievement school. Well, right along with that, and many of you know what I'm talking about, right along with that was the press release that came from the Georgia Department of Education about the increase in AP use within the state of Georgia and where Georgia had moved to rank 12th in the use of advanced placement courses. That information and that news right together is a way to tell that story in a broader way than what we're able to tell it from just a single front. Again tremendous resource. When we were able to take that tab, connect it to, and I'll use my friend from Forsyth County, when she talked about doing in constant contact, taking that link, link and sending it right out, it was almost within a matter of two or three minutes that people in our community were sending back, great job Barrow County School System, thank you for sharing this news. Because our community is trying to find a way to take the news that's out there and use it to help us sell our county better than where we are right now. So the news tab is a tremendous asset for us. Calendars. We have the Georgia School Board Association calendar. We're able to put the calendars for board meetings. We're able to put teaching and learning meeting calendars, leadership meetings. We're able to put our system and school calendars there. Any kind of calendar that you want to look at, if you go under the calendar tab, it's got them all listed right there. And again, from a transparency standpoint and from a standpoint of community members and people internally within our system wanting to know, when is that meeting that we said? Our district leadership team meetings that we have, our board members can come and attend those as training meetings. And with that, all they have to do is go into eBoard and they can be reminded of when is that training. 
So it's a one stop, and I'm going to use the conversation that um, Scott said. It is that one stop shop for coordinating all of that information. Meetings. This is probably the module that we use tremendously overtly in our school system. We have our board meetings there, but we also have our school governance team meetings from each one of our schools. We have executive cabinet meetings. We have leadership team meetings from schools. We have some of our schools that are using this to put their faculty meetings on. We have advisory team, um, advisory committee meetings there. I, I am going to borrow your idea about the student advisory committee. Um, and that's what I meant earlier. By coming and listening, we learn ideas that we can take back. And I'm not ashamed to steal. <laughs> and you shouldn't be either. We host our student advisory committees. Um, actually, we have them through video conferencing. And so at their schools, they're able to stay within their building, and we're not taking them away. So they engage with me at 7.30 um, on our student advisory committee. But having that opportunity to put that right on eboard, we certainly will be doing that real, real soon. But we, this is a way for us to, in our meetings, to show the alignment. Now the next module that we'll talk about is strategic align is the strategic plan, but our meetings piece is just as important in that strategic planning process as the strategic plan itself. Because we have kind of a, a, a way of looking at things with our meetings module is that if it doesn't align with our strategic plan, then it doesn't belong on the agenda. And so therefore when we write an agenda, our agendas have our three goal areas, and if the items do not connect with that, then they're for some other conversation. And every one of our agendas, you would see that our agendas have our goal areas and lined up with how that connects with our strategic plan. Policies. Um, this is a, a great tool that has our policy index, our regulations and exhibits it has pending policies. Many of you know that when you need feedback on policies, this is a great place in order to gain that feedback from community stakeholders. As we've already heard in another presentation, that search engine is one of the most important tools that we can have. When we are looking at how this works in other school systems, when we're pulling up policies, what ideas do we have from other school systems? How have they worked with this particular area? And so this is a great tool for us, not only within our organization to search for policies, but to also search broader than our school system. The strategic improvement plan. Um, as Mark mentioned to you, um, my background being in school improvement, to me, this is probably the, one of the most important aspects that we can have in our plans. The strategic improvement plan is really the nucleus of what it is that we do within our systems. And so with that, I think that when we talk about taking that strategic plan and cascading it down, is what is so critical. So if you look at your modules, you'll see that we not only have our Georgia Department of Education strategic plan, but how our district plan is working with that. And then we have all of our schools that have posted their strategic plans and their balanced scorecards that show that cascaded work from our district down to our schools. You'll also notice in our strategic plans that each of our schools have the same goals as our district goals. There may be different actions, or those actions may be further elaborated based on the school, but you will see that all of that work is directly aligned. Evaluation module. This probably for me has been the module that I've used the most recently. Um, we have our board self-assessment on the eboard. We have our board members that are able to go in, use the evaluation module um, when they are at home, and then come in to a, a executive session or board meeting and, and be able to have conversation around what that self-assessment means for our board and how we can work to use that to improve the work that we're doing within our system. I mentioned earlier about our district accreditation. And I'll just remind you that 
one of the most valuable tools that we had when we did our district accreditation last spring was we literally took every aspect that was on that district accreditation, we downloaded it onto the iPads for the team, and we handed when they came in an iPad over and they could go in and access every piece of artifact and evidence that they needed. Now, how many of you have done accreditation visits, I'm about to tell my age here, but 10, 15, 20 years ago, any of you here? So you know what I mean when I say those notebooks. If you're like me, when I have been responsible for accreditation visits and you just have notebook after notebook after notebook with documentation for a team to go through, it was amazing. And this was the first time that this team had ever been given an iPad and said everything's right here. And at first it took a little training for them to be able to do that. And we had technology folks that were ready and, and willing to help them, but it absolutely was one of the most valuable tools that we did in moving our accreditation process along and that visit being as successful as it was. It was very powerful in that in each one of the committees, the committee member was able to upload the documentation as we went along and we could go back and do just like what we said, is this approved? Is this, do we need more information here? And we could watch that as it transpired throughout the process. Leadership evaluations. Um, I'm gonna flop the way that we have this here and talk first about the superintendent evaluation. Um, I, I did the superintendent evaluation first in our school system um, because I felt like it was important to model for our principals. Um, what happens with that is that um, we had our goal areas. I would upload artifacts and evidence. It took some training on our board members' parts to be able to go in and say, under this particular category, please make sure to go in and open all of these different artifacts and evidence. And I think that that's a piece that we need to continue to say over and over and over again. Just putting this out there and not having the training and the support for the individuals, the end users, as you, as you talked about, making sure that everyone understands how to go in and access the information, and just that all of that information is there and available is a critical component of that. But my takeaway is that no matter where I'm at now, I can go in and I can pull up what I call my electronic portfolio. I don't call it my evaluation, I call it my electronic portfolio. Because the way that I look at it is that when I'm talking with someone or if I'm sharing something about what's going on with our school district, I can go right into my evaluation, I can pull up a particular area, I can pull up that document and I can talk about anything that I need to from my evaluation, my electronic portfolio. We then cascaded that down into our principals and our central office staff. So that last year, our principals also had their evaluation we uploaded into eBoard. And we are hoping to continue to use that as a um, resource to be able to house our evaluations. Documents. This is another area that it's a tab out there that sometimes we forget that it's there. And so for us, we started saying, what is it that we could do with this document tab that we haven't thought of? I mentioned earlier about how did we become fortunate enough to be recognized as best overall user for eBoard, and a lot of it has to do with listening to you, listening to the thoughts that you have. We've heard a number of times today Going in and looking at other systems' websites is a great way to take that and help you target of what can you do within your school system. Mark mentioned about the fact that we were first place for the digital district survey. Well, if I told you how we got to do that or what I believe how we got to be there, I'd tell you that we took the questionnaire that was there and we went through and we asked ourselves, what do we not have and how can we get it in place? And I believe that we use that to spur what we did in our district. It wasn't necessarily what 
can we tell you about ourselves, but how can we use that as an improvement tool? And that's the way I look as eBoard. As a community of learners, I encourage us to reach out and look at other people's system pages and find out what it is that they're doing and what can we do within our system to improve upon. And so one of the areas that we really worked on, I think I heard it somewhere um, at, at a conference that I was at, was housing contracts. You know, those contracts that you have with people and you never know where they are and there'll be a contract that's in the business service area and there's a contract in the teaching and learning area and there's a contract that you got for land at the superintendent's office. Well, if you house them all in one place, then you can go in and you can find what you need. So for us, that's been a great place for us to house those particular documents. Also, committees. When there are people that are um, serving on committees, it allows us to keep a list of those people that are a part of that process. It also allows us to archive documents. When there are things that are no longer really relevant on our day-to-day -day operations of eBoard, but yet you don't need to, to do away with them, you can archive them in that document section. There's a performance tab that allows us to look at longitudinal data from our state level to post our test results and also to post our district balance scorecards. And I mentioned that we also have our school balance scorecards as well. So it's a place for us, as Buster said earlier from Forsyth, that our community want to know how our schools are performing. They want to be able to say, are our, are our schools performing well or what are the areas that they need to improve in? And so this allows us to have a place besides our website that people know to go and look at. Legislation. During this time of year when there's so much going on at the Capitol, this is a tab that we can go in and we can follow what's going on. Resources tabs. And then the Georgia Department of Education. For the Georgia School Board Association, we have e-law, e-boardsmanship, forms, and training opportunities. So that when we're looking at one site that provides you a wealth of information, eBoard is that one particular tool. Now some people say, do you work for eBoard? No, I don't. I am truly just a superintendent that got sold real quick on the value of what this tool can do for us as we work to communicate with all of our stakeholders throughout our community. So why is connecting the dots important? I believe that it does ensure alignment. I believe that it allows us to be transparent. One of the things that our communities are absolutely begging us to do is to be transparent with the work that we're doing. There is nothing that can be more transparent than when you put out on your website every document that is going to be discussed at every meeting, what the outcomes are, and all of the information that goes with that. Accountability. It allows our communities and others to be able to see how are we performing? Communication. I truly believe that this tool can help us communicate what we are doing within our school systems better than most any tool that I know of. And I do think that connected with social media and all of the other things that we have at our fingertips, that this can be a link that helps us to communicate what we're doing on a daily basis in our school systems. When I think about communication, um, as many of you do, our media um, sometimes turns over at who are writing the stories. And back, I guess, around November, we had a new journalist that came to our local paper. And um, <coughs> She, she asked, how do I know how to get the information? Well, I immediately knew the first thing that I had to do with her was to school her 
on eboard. And it did not take very long at all to the point that she now sends me a message, and we have a work session tonight, by the way, and she sent me a message in preparation because she's, she's seen everything that's out there. She's already got her stories just about written that will have to be in the paper by noon tomorrow. She's just waiting for the additional information to input based on tonight's work session. But she's asking the questions prior to tonight because she has the information at her fingertips. And because she took the time to learn about eBoard, she also has learned that she can go back and she can find meetings that were previously done and find supporting information. And she can say, well, this wasn't something that was just arbitrarily done. This is something that has a history here. And we're able to take her to those particular sites. And what we're finding is, is that she's writing stories that are more thorough, more factual, and not based on personal innuendo, and really presenting our school system in a different light. So if you've not had the time to sit down and speak with your media person, I encourage you to take that time. Engagement, when we talk about engagement, um, Mark, I want one of those e-pens because what I think as feedback is that if I had a pen that I could put on my lapel, that every time I walked into a meeting I could say, go look on our website and find the orange E. And all you have to do is click onto that and you will be able to find the information that you need. We write articles that we post in the newspaper. Every meeting that we have, I've even caught myself at every parent meeting that I have now. I'm pulling up the website and I'm showing them exactly how to go in to eBoard and telling them how they can access the information. It's critical at every teacher advisory meeting, at every time we have the opportunity, taking people to that site because the more times we can communicate that this is where you can find the information, it allows them to be empowered and they become a part of what we're doing. They become engaged in the process. And lastly, we've already talked about efficiency a little bit, but the fact that we can at any place go in and get all of our information by just clicking a button is definitely a whole lot more efficient than carrying around these huge data notebooks that people used to carry around and it also allows us to access anything at a quick moment so that we can speak to it intelligently. We've talked about this from a school system perspective, but I also think that connecting the dots to ensure alignment of our school systems. We know that just like Dr. Huff shared this morning, that when you want to look in the media and find negative press about school systems, you can find it. But there is power in numbers. And the more that we are coordinated, collaborating, sharing ideas, and able to tell similar stories, I think the more effective we're going to be. Every one of us sitting in this room as a school system knows the power of being able to say, go to your website, click on the orange E, and you can have at your ready fingers the access to information. But if we had that in Georgia in all 180 school systems that were doing it with the efficiency that, we're, that several of us in here in this room are working to try to have, then we would have a communication tool around the state of Georgia, and I know in other states as well, that would be able to squash some of the negative connotations that are out there about education. And so I believe that this is a tool that can help us be more productive and more efficient. I would be remiss, I think, if I didn't try to tie all of what we're trying to do into this is not just a tool to help us house what we're doing 
in our school systems. This truly is a tool that will allow us to be better at what we're doing so that we can serve our students better. Our ultimate goal is to see our students' achievement increase. Well, what if we used eBoard to lead transformation? That we planned the journey, we communicated the plan, we measured progress, and we facilitated change. We're able to do that through eBoard, through the strategic plan, through our meetings module. We're able to communicate what's going on in our school system. To develop management system experts. I have a team of people right here on this front row that I don't know what we would do without these folks and more back home. But these are experts in what we do. I have one sitting down at the other end of the table there that I say all the time, I won't do this without you. I mean that, I won't do this without you. <laughs> but it takes a team of people and experts that are working to make this happen in our school system. It promotes curiosity. It allows us to challenge the status quo. Buster, you've challenged me today with the status quo of making sure that I have my agenda for my student advisory committee on eBoard. There are other things that we've heard today that will challenge us to be better at what we're doing. It's challenging the status quo. Demanding process thinking. It demands that we ask, how do you do what you do to identify the steps to manage and improve our process? That is exactly what the strategic planning module tells us to do. It tells us to put in place a process about what we're doing. Comparing the best. We've shared here about going in and looking at other school systems and seeing how they go about in putting their information out on eBoard. Benchmarking. It allows us to see not only from a benchmark standpoint of policies and performance, but how are they telling their story in their system. To assess and apply. We've got tools within this eBoard that allow us to do self-assessment. The award recognition program that everyone should submit a application to by April 1st, it's a self-assessment if we use it to help us get better at what we do. Not just about standing up at the conference and being recognized, but it allows us to get better at what we're doing. It allows us to drive that continuous strategic improvement. Alignment and integrating, coordinating our plans, information, resources, actions, results, all of this is what we can coordinate and align within eBoard. It allows us to be innovative. And through all of this process, I do believe that it will allow us to sustain the gains. Now some of you in this room may recognize that the 10 steps that I just shared with you are the Malcolm Baldridge model steps. Whether you're a school system, whether you're a business, whether you're an organization, these are steps that tell us how do we get to be the best of the best. And I hope that what we've been able to do is to connect the dots of how eBoard can help us, whether it's through accreditation, whether it's through evaluation, whether it's through our meetings, whether it's through our strategic planning module, whether it's the way that we communicate our news and the people that are helping us make the decisions. I hope that you can see that connecting the dots is important. One last thing on connecting the dots. Steve Jobs says, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. I shared with you the story that just a few short years ago, it was the fall of 2010, that we started, started using the strategic planning module. We hadn't begun to use the evaluation module. We had not begun to use the accreditation module. We had not begun to use any of these modules that we're talking about today. So all I'm asking you to do is take a step forward. You don't necessarily know what's going to be at the end, and you really won't know the power of it 
until you're able to look back and see that in this entire process, what you've done is able to pull your community along with you because of one one-stop shop communication tool that is truly just a tool, but it is about the people, as I said earlier, that are able to help us make this a success. So thank you very much.